Hey y'all, welcome back to a new video. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about a concept or, or a subject that I find very interesting, which is event-driven architectures. And the reason I say architectures is because this isn't something someone wrote about in the book. It's uh, It has many shapes and forms and you have different systems that are event-driven and they might not look the same. Event-driven architectures are usually tied with microservices these days, but I think there's a lot you can take into monoliths, especially modular monoliths, a lot of the concepts make a lot of sense in most applications. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. And the reason I have this pen with me is because we're going to use an iPad to draw a little bit. So let's jump into the iPad, shall we? Okay, before we talk about event-driven systems, let's talk a little bit about how regular message-driven systems are usually architected. Let's use e-commerce as an example. So let's say the user goes into the checkout they want to purchase some items. Well, let's assume that you have a modular monolith or that you can at least separate components. You probably have the checkout component, which is supposed, for example, to create an order. You might also have a payment processing service and you might also have a shipment component. So regardless of whether you want to call those domains, modules, components, or if they're all together, they still exist. And what also happens is that those components need to communicate to one another. So checkout might communicate to payment processing. And if you get an okay, it might then call shipment saying, hey, we started shipment for this order. So this would create an order, this would charge a card, and this would start the shipment. Cool. Now, if we're talking about a monolith, this communication might be through a method call. And if we're talking about a microservices architecture, for example, this might be an HTTP call, or maybe you're using gRPC, which is still built on top of HTTP. The point is, in either case, this is synchronous. This happens first, this happens second, and this happens last. If this process fails, then it never gets to shipment and you just show the user an error. Now, another option that you have is you can queue those processes. You can have them run on the background. And the big difference is in that case, you wouldn't tell the user immediately whether it succeeded or not. This is super common in e-commerce. Sometimes you finish an order and you go into a page where you just wait for your payment to be processed. It's happening in the background. In that case, it would be asynchronous but you're still relaying commands, even though maybe the payment is being queued like this, you're still telling the payment component, hey, try to issue a payment for this order. And then you might say to the shipment module, hey, start a shipment to this order, even though it's asynchronous. Keep this in mind. You issue commands, you tell components to do something, you have an actor, you are issuing orders. So you have some coupling between those components. Even if we're talking about a modular monolith where they are somehow loosely coupled, checkout must still be aware of payment and must still be aware of the shipping module so that it can send messages through method calls. Keep this in mind. Now let's talk about the event-driven approach. We would also have the checkout, which is responsible for creating the order. We would still have the payment module and we would still have the shipment module. The big difference though is the checkout module would no longer call the payment module. It would instead simply say that an order was created. This is an event, and this is the core of event-driven architecture. This event gets sent to something we call an event broker, and the event broker is also an extremely important component in an event-driven architecture. Now, the job of the broker is to relay this event to its consumers. You might have heard of Publish Subscribe or PubSub, and this is exactly what we have here. So you have an event and you might have different components subscribe to this event. Maybe you have the payment component subscribing. And in this case, you have the checkout component publishing it. And this obviously goes through the broker. Okay, I had to draw this again because everything was huge, but we have the same thing. So we have the checkout module publishing an order created event, and that happens as soon as there's a state change. So you create an order in the database, all of its related items, so order lines, whatever else you want, 
and you've published that event into the broker. The broker is a centralized piece in your architecture, and it is responsible to relay that event to every subscriber. We call those producers, and everyone that consumes an event is a consumer. Now, this is obviously going to happen asynchronously. You have the event being dispatched on a request, and then the payment module is consuming that in another process. So it is distributed. Now what happens is the payment module is going to process as usual. And for example, it might publish two different events. It figures, well, maybe it publishes a payment succeeded event. Now, if it doesn't go out, maybe it publishes a payment failed event. Remember, since this is asynchronous, you don't have the option to immediately give the user an error. You cannot tell them about the payment immediately because this is asynchronous. You have to wait for the payment module to do something with that, and then you can relay that information to the user. So if the payment failed, what you can ha happen here is you can have the order or the check module, whatever you want to call it, also consume that. So you have the order module subscribe to this payment fail event so that you can update the order and say, hey, this order failed, and then you can show something to the user, send an email as well. However, if the payment succeeded event is dispatched, maybe you can also have the shipment module listening to this and say, hey, whenever a payment succeeds, I want to start shipment for that order. So you also have that listening to this event. Besides the shipment module, you also have the order module listening to this, for example, as well. So now you have one event and two consumers. So the payment module right here does not know that it's going to have two consumers for this event and one consumer to this event. It has no idea. It's very loosely coupled. It is just telling the broker that something happened. And the cool thing is you can add as many consumers as you want to any of those events. So whenever you need to add an additional feature, let's say, for example, you want to add a feature where if a user purchases more than $1,500, you want to give them a coupon. So you can also add that here. Let's say that you have a coupon or rather a rewards module, and you can also listen to this payment succeeded event and react to it. So the shipment module would start the shipment. The order module would update the order and maybe also send an email and the rewards module would give them a coupon if they have spent more than $1,500. And the code that you have for this process, all that it does really is charge the card. It doesn't do anything else. So it is extremely simple. The same goes to this code, your checkout. It's also extremely simple. It only creates the order and publishes an event. You have a different piece of code issuing the payment, and then you have a different piece of code starting the shipment updating the order, giving them the reward. And everything becomes very reactive. So here you can also update the order to say that it failed and send an email. And you can see that you kind of have a chain reaction. You have a component issuing an event, another component reacting to it that also issues maybe two events. And then you have different components consuming those events. And those different components might also issue more events. So your system becomes, rather than declarative, reactive. You do not command any component to do something. You just tell the world that something happened. An order was created, a payment was succeeded, a reward was given, that kind of thing. Now, let's talk about pros and cons. Well, for one, you have loosely coupled components. They do not know about their consumers. You have very extensible code. For example, like I said, you have the coupon example. You want to give users who have purchased, who have spent more than $1,500 a coupon. You don't have to touch either the payment code or the order code. You can just add a new consumer. You have small components because they do so little. It gives you some fault tolerance because for example, let's go back into what we drew. If the payment module fails for some reason, let's say that it throws an exception or something happens, it does not affect the order module or rather this piece of code right here because it already happened. 
And if this fails somehow, if the payment module fails, you have the event stored in your broker and you can fix it and retry the events. If the reward system fails, it does not affect the order or the shipment components. You can still fix this and retry the event, replay the event. So you'd get a great deal of fault tolerance. And I would also add scalable here. Now about the cons, and we have a lot. First, it's more complex. Secondly, it involves the network. So while you previously had a local call, now you have a network call. You also get eventual consistency. So for example, you cannot show the result to the user immediately. It might take a while. If you have a lot of events going on, it might take quite some time. And you also need some infrastructure. Although I think that's included in complex. Although it does give you a lot of benefits, it also introduces a lot of complexity. Let me give you an example. Let's go back here and let's go into this point where we publish the order created event. What would happen if you reached the checkout component and it created the order in the database, but the event publish failed? It did not publish the event to the broker. What would happen is the payment component would never consume this event because it never got into the broker and the broker can never relay the event to other consumers. Same thing here. Let's say that you process the payment, you charge the user's card, but you cannot publish the payment succeeded event. Well, what would happen is the shipment would never happen, the order would never be updated, and you would never get the user a reward. You would have the payment in the database, but nothing would be updated. In the same manner, what if the order component listens to this event? So the event worked, but it listens twice. Well, this is an update, so there's not a lot of problem. But what if the payment component listens twice to the same order created event? Now, that's a problem because you're going to charge the user's card twice. And obviously, those are very known problems and there are solutions to them. So it's not the end of the world. With that said, it is more complex and harder to handle. Those are just two examples. You also have a network call, which is another thing to fail. You have eventual consistency, which is not really a con, but simply characteristic of this type of architecture and you need to set up some infrastructure, whether that is the event broker or maybe you're using the outbox pattern, you're gonna to have to set that up as well. So it is in general more complex. Now, the good thing is you can take some pieces of that and implement in your application. You don't have to use the entire thing. For example, the concept of events is really interesting in my opinion. Making systems reactive makes a lot of sense. And if you have a monolith, and for example, I talk about Laravel a lot on this channel. If you're using a Laravel application, you can use the event buzz to publish events and also listen to them within your application. And you can use that to deal, for example, with temporal coupling, which is what we just showed on the first example that we have. Let's go here, let's find that right here. So let's say that you have this code and it's synchronous and your boss goes and say, hey, uh, we need to give everyone that spends more than $1,500 a coupon. Now you need to add some code, maybe right here, and that could fail. Maybe they're going to say, hey, we need some fraud prevention system. And then maybe you need to add something here. If you have an event-based architecture, you can simply listen to those events. The reason I like, well, event-driven apps in general is that I think of events as hooks. So you have hooks and you can attach to them throughout your system. When you have an existing feature and it publishes events, it just makes your life so much easier and they're loosely coupled. You don't have to touch the code that already exists. You can simply add a listener to it, a consumer. But that's just one of the things that I really enjoy about this. All right, this was meant to be just a very simple introduction. I could spend hours and hours talking about this and there's a lot more to this. This is just the basics. With that said, I do hope that this made sense. Uh, Event-driven architectures are wonderful. There's a lot you can learn there. And uh, I do recommend that you that you go and take a look into that. Um, obviously, if you have a distributed application, it makes a lot of sense. If you have a monolith, then it might not make sense to use all of that. If you have a simple application, it might not make sense to use all of that as well. But if you have complex processes, I really do recommend that you try and think of events. It can make your life so, so much easier. It's just a different mindset. You just think about reactions rather than commands. And I think that 
does tie in a lot with usual business processes that we're developing every day. Anyway, this video is already long enough, so I'll see you in the next video and let me know what you thought of this one. All right, cool. See you later. Bye-bye.